Boker Tov and welcome! Today is Yom Revi'i. It is the fourth day of the week and it's Wednesday at my house in Michigan. And today we're going to continue what we talked about yesterday. We want to have our children, our sons and our daughters grown up as plants that are planted strong in the mountain of their inheritance. And my name is Ann Elliot and I'm the creator and founder of homeschoolingtorah.com. Yesterday we talked about the fact that when Israel was brought out as a vine out of Egypt and they were planted in the new promised land of Israel, um, they needed to cast out the nations that were all around them and not listen to their lies, not listen to their falsehood, not be called to go worship false idols and be turned away from serving the one true God. And today I said I would continue talking about some ways that we can make sure that our kids are planted and strong, not wild, not running their own direction, but planted and, and firm in the Torah of Yehovah that comes out, the word of the law that comes out from Jerusalem. Well, I wanted to bring you over to Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. And Yeshua says something really interesting. He says, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Now, I was thinking about that for my kids. I, I wouldn't want my kids to be uprooted. And I was thinking to myself, how do you know who planted this plant? I got this plant, you know, at our local store just this week, so it's still looking green. Otherwise, I'm not really that good at plants. And sometimes I wonder if I'm really that great at mothering, too. How do I know who's planting what seeds and if they're even going to turn out good. I mean, you can do the best you can, right? But you can't guarantee anything. So I thought, let's look and see how we can know who planted it. And how do we know what kind of fruit comes out of it? Well, that's that's one indication of who planted it. And everything else is going to be uprooted. So that's a dangerous thing. I don't want that for my kids. So I want you to turn over this morning to James chapter 1, verses 15 through 22. And it says... When desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. That's a plant that was not planted by the Heavenly Father, and it is a plant that will be uprooted. It was given birth by sin. Down in verse 18 it says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So now there's the other plant that was brought forth by the word of truth. We talked about that yesterday, how important that truth is. And we can be a first fruits, a planting of his creatures, something that's strong and, and the real deal, right? Okay, in verse 19 he says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. There it is, right there. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Right there. Hmm. So we already know we need to get away from those lying nations that are around us, but it isn't really just that. You see, inside our hearts we have a lot of wickedness, and we could shelter our kids, we could protect them, but they're next to us, and we're their parents, and we aren't perfect, are we? Hmm. In fact, I know a lot of times in my home, the wrath of man has ruled. And I think back to that, and I think all those times when I was angry, I lost my temper. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. He says in verse 21, James does, James 1, 21, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I think it starts with us as parents. We have to lay aside all the filthiness and the overflow of wickedness that, sorry, we have grown up with, and it's deep into our heart. We need to ask Him to do heart surgery on us, and that's something only the Holy Spirit can do. We need to go into our hearts and root it out, but we can do it too. It's not just Him. We can't just, you know... Sometimes I think we think that God does everything. And he says here, you need to lay it aside. You need to physically get rid of the the wickedness, the filthiness, the anger, the wrath, and receive instead with meekness the implanted word. That means get yourself in your Bible. Get yourself in your Bible. 
put verses everywhere around, you know, if you have to put a verse in every single room of your house so that you can't go anywhere without looking at scripture so that you have that word implanted within you, then do it. If that's what it takes, absolutely do it. Set time aside today to fill your mind with the word of God so that you will not be tempted to have filthiness and wickedness coming out of you. Be doers of the word though. You can't just look at it. It doesn't have this magic power that when you look at it, all of a sudden you're going to be righteous. No, you have to be a doer of the word. And he can help you. He can remind you. He can prompt you and prick your conscience. But you have to listen to him and you have to be a doer of the word or you're just going to be deceiving yourself. I wanted to also read a, a section from Galatians 5 in closing. Galatians 5.19. And these are probably familiar verses to you. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. These are the things that do not bring forth the righteousness of God. The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, which we know is defined in the Torah, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. And here are some that might affect us more. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not be planted in, in the mountain of his inheritance. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such, there is no Torah. <sighs> That's hard. So, we have some things that you can do for homework. Plant the Word of God in your heart. And as, as James one twenty one says, receive with meekness the implanted Word, which is able to save your soul. And I know when he says he's able to save it, he means it. But secondly, be doers of the word today. Ask him to show you what are the areas you need help in to be a doer of the word. I know he'll answer that request. Have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow.